Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon. My name is uh, Sophie Bontemps. I'm working at the University Catholic of Louvain in Belgium. I completed my PhD in 2010, working in general land cover mapping, land cover change detection, and then since six years, I slowly moved to um, agriculture applications. Um, and uh, this is a pleasure for me to be here today to talk to you about the uh, Sentinel-2 uh, for agriculture system, so sent to agri uh, which is uh, very useful for operational agriculture monitoring at national level and at uh, parcel resolution. So before I introduce you uh, this uh, system, I will uh, take a few minutes to uh, draw a little bit the context and uh, to explain or summarize how the Sentinel time series from the Copernicus uh, program have completely changed the game for agriculture. So the first reason is certainly the fact that Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 time series really match the requirements um, of agriculture in terms of spatial resolution first. Um, the 10 meter of Sentinel-2 is really key to have um, applications at the parcel level. And uh, the revisit of uh, five days with Sentinel-2 and six days with Sentinel-1 will allow also uh, to get very dense time series uh, and therefore to be able to really follow uh, the growing cycle of the crops and to identify the key phenological dates uh, within these cycles. Another key asset of the Sentinel time series is uh, the long-term continuity. We are here with an operational program it's not only that you will get the Sentinel data today, but you will also get it uh, within five years, within 10 years and even beyond. So with this continuity, we can really start thinking about operational application, and this is completely new. Of course, with this data, there are also challenges, and one of these challenges is uh, certainly the amount of data that you need to handle. You can see here at the bottom of the slide the uh, amount of data which is acquired by Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 globally every day, which is uh, huge. And so the question is this one, how to handle such a huge amount of EO data in near real time for agriculture? And Probably one first specificities of operational agriculture application is the fact that you must be in real time. So the value of the information in agriculture is its timeliness. Crop specific monitoring information can have impact on the prices on the market. And so you need to get this information within uh, the season, not six months, three months after the end of the season, you need to get it in real time. And so the big volume of data that we were just talking about, you need to process it continuously along the season into relevant products, uh, which are useful to um, provide information. And so here, for the sake of illustration, you can see uh, what is this volume of data over a country like Italy. So this is uh, significant. Last but not least, when we are talking about operational agriculture application, uh, we must know that uh, food uh, monitoring, food information, food statistics is a very sensitive issue. And so um, this is clear that the country will not want that someone else processes its own statistics. They will want to master the information process and we must provide them um, the tool and the capacity to do so. So this is in this context that we started uh, the Send to Agri project, how to streamline the data flow from the observation to the information. So Send to Agri is a project, was a project that uh, was funded by the European Space Agency. Uh, it was uh, planned to last three years and it was organized in three main phases, which are um, illustrated here. The two first phases started before the Sentinel-2 era, so 2014 and 15. We started interacting with users, stakeholders, to um, understand exactly what they needed in terms of products. And then for each product, we uh, tested method, me different methods and we identified the best ones. Then in the second phase, we uh, developed a system with these methodologies, and we derived some prototype products uh, using um, Spot5, Spot4, or Spot5 Take5 data. And then 
We were in 2016 with the first Sentinel-2 data and we uh, entered in the last phase of the project. We demonstrated the tool, the system that we developed before over three full countries and over a set of local uh, sites. We uh, tested the methodologies, we adjusted them, we put a lot of effort in validating the products, inter interacting with the uh, countries, with the stakeholders. Uh, we put also some effort in capacity building, trainings, and at the end we had a system which was qualified and uh, which uh, generated very promising results, very promising products. And so the users were really ready to uh, go one step further and to uh, adopt it. And this is why the project was extended, not to develop something new, but really to uh, consolidate what was built during uh, these three years. So it means um, supporting new users, supporting new uh, applications, adjusting the algorithm and uh, developing capacity building activities making training and so on. So we have been building uh, during this last phase really a user community uh, of Centuagri, and this is still going on. So even now this year, last year, we are having uh, webinars every two months. We have a forum, we interact with the users. And so Centuagri is from an, a project, it is not really a system with its own community. So but what is Centuagri? Centuagri is an open source system so you can see here starting from the very beginning so reading or um, downloading level one product it includes a module for the atmospheric correction and then when you have the level two products there are four processors here uh, in the uh, yellow boxes which uh, generate these four kinds of products monthly cloud free surface reflectance composite at 10 20 meters Cropland mask at 10 meters, which are updated every month. Crop type map also at 10 meters for the main regional crops. And vegetation status maps at 10 meters, which are delivered for each acquisition. So this system, you can download it on the website. It has been demonstrated at national scale in several countries in real time. So during the season or offline after the season, and the system can run locally on a local server or in the cloud. There are two uh, modes with which you can operate the system. First, there is the automated mode for operational application. So at, before the um, monitoring period, you put the parameters of your system and then you just launch it and the system will run alone along the season. In the manual mode, you uh, can do more um, customization of what you want to do running the different processors independently. There is also a visualization tool which will allow you displaying your products either uh, on a web server or in QGIS, for instance, everything being open source. So how does it work? Uh, before the monitoring period, you have to uh, initialize, parameterize uh, your system. So first, Defining your area of interest, this is a shape file that you have to upload. Defining the monitoring period, the start and the end dates of this period. Defining uh, if you want only Sentinel-2 or also Landsat-8. And you can select the products, the processors that you want to run. And then you launch your system and the processing will start. During the campaign, during the, the period, you um, will be asked to upload your field data that will be used for the croplands and for the crop type. So how does it work for uh, the LAI or NDVI? So you have parameterized your system and when uh, the monitor monitoring period starts, the system will automatically look at the data providers and each time there is a Sentinel-2 acquisition, it will pre-process it and directly derive the LAI or the NDVI product. And so you get your time series, uh, which is uh, building along the season in real time. This is for the uh, LAI and more or less uh, it works in the same way for the cropland mask. Here for the cropland mask, you need to wait for the mid season to get your first product. 
So during the first month, the system will accumulate the Sentinel-2 time series, will make the pre-processing, and at the mid-season, will provide you the first cropland mask. And then it will continue accumulating the data, pre-process them, and each month, the cropland mask will be updated until the end of the season. Here is the first example of cropland mask. We are in Mali. Uh, from the year 2016 using Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8, and you can see uh, that the overall accuracy uh, is quite high with a very good mapping of the croplands. This is the first product at national scale over this country, in fact, at this uh, high spatial resolution. What is interesting with the cropland mask is that is the fact that the accuracy is already very very high within the season. So you reach the plateau one or two months after the middle of the season. And so with this product, the timeliness of the information is really achieved. And this is really important. For the last product, the crop type, we are in the same uh, operation uh, mode than the crop uh, land. So it means that the first crop type will come at the, mid, uh, at the middle of the season. So the data are acquired and pre-processed and at the mid season, you will get your first crop type. And during the second half of the season, again, the system will accumulate the Sentinel-2 time series and then generate your crop type from the end of the season. This is an example um, of cropland and crop type at national scale over Ukraine. So you get the cropland, non-cropland map. And uh, for each pixel which is labeled as cropland, the crop type map will give you the main uh, crop type with a very really nice uh, accuracy. From this crop type, you can derive crop area indicators already at mid-season. And at the end of the season, you get more consolidated results. When you get the Sentu Agri product, what is of course very really interesting is that you can combine them and to then you can do crop specific monitoring. So here, this is an example uh, where you have your crop type, you select only winter wheat parcels and you can do your winter wheat crop specific monitoring starting from the mid season when you get your first map. And this crop specific monitoring is a really key uh, in terms of application with many, many um, possibilities of, you, of use. Another example, we are in South Africa in Western Cape province, and this is uh, the first monthly composite from June at the beginning of the season. And then you can see July, August, the vegetation is very high. And from September, the vegetation is harvested until the end of the season, October and November, end of season, you get the crop type. So just to, to mention that uh, Centro Agri is a per pixel classification, but even if it is per pixel, you can see that we get uh, very well the patterns of the field. Yeah. The accuracy of the crop type maps are also rather interesting from the mid season. So depending, of course, on the uh, seasonality of your crops, but uh, the uh, crop type at the mid season is already uh, usable. Of course, the accuracy will increase uh, along the season. So during the project, we have developed the tool, but we have also invested a lot in interactions uh, with users. We, organize, we have organized a workshop in the three countries that uh, we have mapped at national scale, and we have done a lot of trainings, hands-on trainings, capacity building activities. Now, Centro Agri is used by a large community. Here, this is an example uh, uh, with the World Food Programme, which is using Centro Agri. Um, which is running on uh, com a commercial cloud. So you can see here Amazon, EODC, the diocese. And so this is something that is running, that is successfully performing today. Some statistics now about this user community. Here, this is uh, the download of the central agri systems. Uh, you can see that this is uh, growing. And uh, that also um, the versions of the central agri system have evolved. So the first, the version that was released at the end of the project is the version 1.7. And so since uh, 2017, we have uh, made evolution of the system based on the feedback we receive from the users. 
To support this uh, users community, we provide a comprehensive set of tools, a website for sure, with a section uh, of frequently asked questions, with a forum, uh, very active, and we try organizing regular trainings, in-person or online trainings uh, under request. So I'm coming to the end of my presentation with um, some concluding remarks about uh, Centuagri. So Centuagri is an open source system able to exploit Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8 in near real time for local to national uh, operational agriculture monitoring. So it is producing high resolution EO products which are suitable for agriculture monitoring. It is downloading and processing Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8 time series uh, in a seamless way, you can access it through a graphical user interface. This is free, this is open source, and it takes care about data privacy, which is really, really important in agriculture uh, applications. So now we have open EO data, we have open algorithm, open tools, uh, we have very efficient IT clouds, and so it means that EO agriculture monitoring is becoming feasible for any country. Of course, if you want the uptake of the tool, the adoption of the tool, what is key is to develop capacity building and to demonstrate your tool and to invest a lot in these activities. With Centuagri, you can do national wall-to-wall -wall processing at 10 meters. It means that you can monitor your growing conditions in a crop-specific manner from the mid-season. It's possible to estimate early cultivated areas and crop areas also from the middle of the season. And you can obtain the drivers of the crop yields. Uh, basically, this is all the biophysical indicators. This is for Centuagri. And um, my last words will be for two other projects will, uh, which will build the evolution of Centuagri. The first one is Sand for Cap. Uh, a sand for cap project which uh, will output a sand for cap system. In fact, the system is already there, uh, where we have added the Sentinel-1 time series, so SAR data, and where we monitor not only the crop type, but also the agricultural practices. And we have also now the sand for stat project, which is just starting and which uh, focus about the uh, link between EO and um, agricultural statistics and which will also improve the uh, estimation of the crop production. So these two projects is kind of next steps of uh, Centuagri. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm uh, open for any questions.